Hey, this is Rohit Shah with Far From Standard Tutoring. Today I'll be showing you how to take derivatives. So, let's say you're given an exponential function, a to the x. What's the derivative of a to the x? Well, the answer is simply the natural log of a times, well, a to the x. So, the derivative of 5 to the x is ln of 5 times 5 to the x. The derivative of e to the x, since e is a number, is ln of e times e to the x. Now, since ln of e happens to be 1, this is just e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, looking at logarithmic functions, what's the derivative of ln of x? Well, the derivative of ln of anything is just the derivative of what's in there divided by what's in there. So the derivative of this is just 1 over x because the derivative of x is 1. And then at the bottom, you just write x. So the derivative of ln of x squared plus 4 is 2x, because that's the derivative of this guy, over x squared plus 4, because that's what this guy is. Now looking at trig functions, sine and cosine, the derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. That's really all you need to keep in mind for now. Uh, the product rule. You've probably heard of the product rule. The biggest thing about the product rule, the biggest mistake people make, is not doing it. Don't forget to do the product rule. The product rule pretty much says that if your function is something that looks like something times something, like a function times another function, then the derivative is not simply a prime times b prime, but it's rather a prime times b plus the other way around b prime times a. So let's say you're given sine of x times log of x. The derivative is not just cosine of x times 1 over x, although it's tempting. Uh, so just don't forget to do the product rule. Using the product rule, this is not the derivative. Instead, the derivative is cosine of x, which is the derivative of the first guy, times just the second guy as is, log of x, plus, now the second guy as is, sine of x, and then the derivative of this guy, which is 1 over x. Finally, the quotient rule. If you have the numerator over the denominator, the derivative is not, again, simply n prime over d prime. Again, it's tempting to do that. But if, an, if you're a new calculus student, just remember, don't forget the product and quotient rules. So this rule is, it's uh, the numerator over here of the derivative. It's really similar to the product rule. It's just the derivative of the first guy times the second guy. Now there's a minus in the middle instead of a plus. The only difference here now is you just divide it by the denominator squared. So now what if, what if the question is, what's the derivative of tangent of x? Now, how, is that, how, how do we use a quotient rule there? Well, we know that tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. So now this is our numerator, our n, and this is our d. Applying the quotient rule, we'll take the derivative of the first guy, which is cosine of x, divided by the second guy, which is also cosine of x, minus, now the other way around. Now just write the first guy as is, sine of x, times the derivative of the second guy, which is negative sine of x. Now just all that thing divided by the denominator squared. Wow, I have to rem rem memorize this whole thing when someone asks me what the derivative of tan of x is? Not really. As we notice, this actually simplifies to cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And from basic trig rules, we know that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this actually becomes 1 over cosine squared x, which is, in fact, secant squared x. So the derivative of tangent of x is actually secant squared of x. And you can figure that out using the quotient rule. Well, I hope these uh, simple derivative shortcuts help you find derivatives quicker. And remember, calculus is fun.